Hi, Lumineers. Welcome to the Lighter Side Show. I'm your host, Jamie Butler, the Everyday Medium. And this is season six. Woo! We have a wonderful guest today in studio, Jen Shamala. Hello. Yay. But before we get to this lovely being of light, I have some housekeeping notes for you. Yes, you guys are so wonderful, always asking, what are we doing? What are we up to? Where are we going next? Well, we are on the move. If you already have developed mediumship skills and you want to go deeper with it, you can join us for the advanced mediumship here at the Center for Love and Light. We also have the Reiki Mastership Series coming up. That's in April. And we're going back to the Akashic Ranch, guys. So if you didn't get an opportunity to join us last year and you liked what you saw all over Instagram and Facebook, come this year. It is the last weekend in June and we're going to be doing all kinds of vortex finding, healing, and watching the night sky because this place is really active. If you've wanted to go somewhere where possibly you're interacting with multidimensional beings and finding crystals and rocks and items that geologists really can't identify or explain why it's located there, this is the place you want to be. Plus, Marianne, you have the cutest tiny horses and <laughs> and ducks and pigeons. Anything that's miniaturized, oh I swear, God. I think she has it there. So shout out to baby Porsche, the little horse. Porsche. Oh, it is Porsche. Oh, you can just edit all that out, Jesse. Love you, Jesse. <laughs> Off note. Um, we're also planning on New York, California, and England coming up. So just putting the buzz out there. If you want to stay updated on everything that we're doing, please head over to jamiebutlermedium.com and sign up for the newsletter. Comes out once a month, has a great article, lets you know all of our discounts, all of our products, everything that's happening. We really appreciate it. We love you guys. Now let's turn our attention to this amazing being. Hey, Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> All right, I'm I was summer. like sitting here like, what else is happening? We're going to England? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully next summer we're going to England. Told you. Told you it was about the British. I the was. British are coming. <laughs> she was just saying that she maybe was going to do the episode in a British accent. Or if some, or if somebody stranger would just walk in the door and speak with a British accent, we'd be fun too. You just love that? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason, Lumineers, that I have Jen in studio today is she's a fabulous mom of three. She is a spiritual coach. She is a Reiki master. She has a wonderful website, dolifeinspired.com. Mm -hmm. And that's the same as your Facebook as well. So please mm -hmm. go check her out. You are a motivational guru, but oh. you deliver it with like this New York kick in your butt. Because so, I was <laughs> With <kicked>. Southern politeness. <gasps> right? Can you marry I that? Am. I'm Southern now. Mm -hmm. 21 years I'm Southern. Don't let the hair fool you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't grow hair like that in the no, South. They don't, they don't do it this way. <laughs> it's a talent. Thank so, you for having me. You're very welcome. I have heard so many stories from you about your kids and what they bring yeah. to the table. And I thought, we've got to talk about this. Because so That's often we look at our kids, whether they're millennials now or they're yeah. just little guys at home, and they are bringing to the table some of the most incredible energy talk, healing talk. Um, I see dead people talk. Yeah. And some of the parents out there are like, what do you do with this? Yeah. It's, it could be alarming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, you're not, if your mind is not in the right place, it could be a little alarming. Oh, who do you see in the corner? <laughs> so I want to know, out of, okay, I'm getting comfortable. This is where my legs disappear and I curl up in the chair. <laughs> um, I want to know, with your three kids, mm -hmm. do you consider them gifted, psychic, indigo, crystal, rainbow? You know, there's all these labels out there. Yeah. And do you use those with your kids? Do you talk about that with your kids? Like, what's your so, approach? So I, I've never thought much of labels so, because I don't want to box my opinion of anybody into mm -hmm. a label. So I say yes. To everything you just said, because they're all bringing in something of each of those labels. So I, as I watch them grow, now they're like adults. So these adults are even more fascinating than they were when they were children, if that's possible. So when they were younger, what did I know? I mean, like, I was still asleep. I mean, literally, I'm like, really asleep? Just didn't know what was happening. So 
I'm watching them say things, and I go in my room like, okay, darling, okay, you said that, great. And I go in my room, <laughs> I don't know what, what they're saying. <laughs> oh, she's going to die. She just told me she's dying. I didn't know what to think of the things that were coming <laughs> out of my kids' mouths. Stop it, back up, back up. You have to tell us. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? So one time, one of my kids, my middle one was very ill. Okay, so she was always ill. 103 fevers, just always sick. I mean, just the poor little thing. We all, we all three of us, myself and my three kids, have celiac disease. We didn't, we didn't know that growing up so I didn't know until I was 35 so I had three kids who were sick but this one was off the charts so we're in we're in her room and she has a spiked fever and I'm just like do I rock her does she want me to rock her and so I'm just like I could my energy must have been now I know my energy was very worried and she just looks at me and holds my face and goes mommy it's okay we've been together many times before we're always going to be together you don't have to worry about these things. So I'm like, okay, sweetie, well, what can I do for you now? Because inside I'm dying. Because she just told me she's going to die. Like, that's what I thought. And then now years later, I'm like, she knew that there was nothing to fear. We would always be together. Even if she was taken from this plane, we were always going to be together. And now I get it. But I didn't get it then. But at two years old, because that child, she was advanced in everything. She walked when she was nine months. She was talking at two. So did you have any religion or spiritual I do. beliefs Since in the Since the cradle, house? baby. We were a Catholic family. I was Italian in New York. Really, that's, end of sentence. Well, that, that's all. I mean, that's all you need. But I did raise my family that way. Did, yeah. In, in Catholicism, do they mm-hmm. teach that, you know, not to no. worry because you're always no. going to be together? Or, are, or were you taught, like, at the end of this life, it ends, you go here and, you know, it's separate. You know, yeah. So, like, why mm-hmm. would your... There would be, there would be no, I don't know why she would have come up with that because even though in, in the faith you are taught that when you die, you go to heaven to be with God, as long as you follow these rules. And so that was the mindset. So there was a little guilt in there. So, um, death is actually feared. I mean, it's not like a, woo, yeah, I'm going to die and you're going to be with me forever. It just was like growing up, it was like, crap, I don't want to die. But I hope I do this right so I get to heaven. So it really wasn't something that you talked about openly. Like, you didn't say, so what do you feel about death today? Like, let's talk about this. Kids, gather around. Mom's got a story. No, you just don't. It just We went to church. We behaved. Um, I would, oh, I remember raising my kids. That, that's not pleasing to what God would want us to do. Jesus would want more from, like, I would say those kinds of things to my kids. Absolutely. But death was not talked about. Mm-mm. I don't know where she got that from. So I was stymied. So I can see where it would be more of a hit to the gut. Yeah. Because it should be afraid. Yeah. Should be afraid. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Should be feared. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, there. it's like, um, since it's not talked about, since we don't embrace that sort of love, truly it's not an openly talked about concept, I was very fearful. And I didn't have those many uh, instances you- with that. Did you go back and talk to her about it? Was it no. just end of the sentence? Did you it was, just like share this and then stop talking about it? I um I would when I talked to her later on, like and then you know, I wa- I watched her all night long. I didn't sleep because I thought she was gonna die. I mean, like that's where my fear base went. You know, I really was very fearful. I thought she just basically told me that this fever's gonna take her in the night, that kind of thing. Giving her Tylenol, getting the fever down, just going back and forth in my room. Um. I would experience, which I didn't know at the time, astral travel, and I would watch over her while she was sleeping. I didn't know at the time, but how else would you explain in your dream being in the room with your child while you're sleeping in your bed? So it really shook me to my core. I just talked to her about things later on. I'm like, how do you feel about this? And she would just be like a regular two-year-old kid, like my doll, my toy, never talked about that again. Yeah. Did these little boo <laughs> that your kids do, yeah. did they change the way that you saw faith, religion, no. belief systems? You know what? Not for a while, which really? is really sad. Like, I definitely thought my kids were, um, as I was growing, as they were growing up, because I was growing up too, right? But as they were growing up, I felt like they were deeply connected to something greater. Like, they had a fabulous faith that they were very loving. Um, I didn't have a problem with my kids rearing them. So I always felt like there was something connected with them to something bigger. I just thought I was really a good disciplinary. I don't know. I just like never really thought 
that it really was what it is. They are connected. They know who they are spiritually. Well, now you're a spiritual coach. Yeah. And so. you do all things healing with Reiki. Which I never would have thought. You translate messages when they come through. You connect people to their higher or yeah. better selves. If you're just listening, I did that in air quotes. And the better. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you make a leap from 100% New York Catholic yeah. to it where was, you are now? It was a, a beat down. It wasn't necessarily a leap. It was a serious beat down. It was um, years of a uh, human experience and struggle. Erosion? Like. Yeah. I eroded. <laughs> I eroded. I did. Um, I was still uh, very, very much in my faith as I was going through the experiences, but I, oh gosh, and I have a, in my book I'm writing right now, Know Thyself, Understanding Your True Self. Um, I kind of dissect the horribleness that was my human experience for the first 47 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And my kids actually, um, by their intuitive nature, which I didn't know back in, you know, 19, no, two or 2000, 2001, when my, my middle child and my, my oldest one would say things, I didn't even know that they were going, mom, wake up, mom, wake up. No. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. My daughter would talk about a friend that she would have, Ashan. Things would be on the floor and I'd say, honey, pick these things up. Mommy just wants you to play with your toys and put them away. She said, mommy, I didn't do that. Ashan did that. And I'd say, Ashan is not here having food on my kitchen table. You are clean your toys up, dear. Mama, our Ashan did these things. Why are you so mad? And I'm like, is my kid losing her mind? Well, there was, now looking back, Ashan was a spirit that she saw and she communicated with. And she played with. I played with. One time that this same child went into the dollar store. This is what we talk about, like, glimpses of past lives or spirits that she sees. The displays were Christmas displays and everything was angels. And there was a row of beautiful black angels. They were so beautiful. And she goes over to her. She, she starts crying. Tears coming down her eyes. Mommy, these are so beautiful. These are the most beautiful angels. Can I have them? She wanted two of these little black angels. I still have them. These were something that she was sensing inside of her so, so deeply. I look back now and I'm like, ah. Oh. She was, knew who she was spiritually. She knew she was connected to everything. And she didn't... Ashan was everything. Do you think it changed the way that she developed relationships with people? Yes. Because as she got older, that's not something you talk about for sure. And that's not something you feel. And she was very susceptible to everyone's energy. Mm. So she was very susceptible to attention. She's like, oh, can't be part of that anymore. Gotta go. Gotta be, part, gotta be out. Nope. Can't be there. So she would... And then finally, we would talk about things. I said, you know, sometimes everybody, because I didn't know what I was talking about either. I just wanted her to be happy. Mm -hmm. And now, I, what I want to talk about these things, it's a completely different viewpoint. But at that time, I'm like, well, sweetie, if th things make you upset, then just separate yourself from them. That's okay. But I didn't know what I was telling her to separate from what she was feeling. <laughs> just separate from people. Ah. So. so did she become more introvert? Mm -hmm. And Yeah. Yeah. She's very much, um, she's starting to, break out of that now, now that we, she's an adult now, but, um, still in, you know, school and stuff, but she, they see things a lot differently and she is having a ball, a ball. <laughs> Did your kids at any time ever do something kind of out in the public that other people witnessed that you couldn't explain? Like you were like, Oh, mm. that he's just different, unique, special. These are some of the words that I hear mm -hmm. parents use when their mm -hmm. kids are really intuitive or psychic. Yeah. My middle one would um, not talk to certain people. Shy away from them. Back up. Back behind me. Just <laughs> exit and yeah. hide? Like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not liking that. <laughs> right behind me. I, and like eight years old, too. I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, I don't know. Just, I don't have to say hi to everybody. I don't have to say, say hi to strangers. I don't have to do that. Like, I know, I know it was energetically. She didn't like that person. Or didn't feel their energy was compatible, shall Did I say. Not to compare your child to a dog that I once had. Stop it. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm about to. Okay, good. 
had a Dalmatian in college. It's the only dog I've ever um, parented or yeah. had. And that dog would approach someone and then just stop and get between me and that other person and start pushing me back. Yeah. I mean, and and just, not not have it. That is so it awesome. Like, why that person? That person looks so beautiful. That person looks yeah. fine. Okay. But I think it's the energy more. Like so now we know we know yeah, right. We know. we know that everything is perfectly perfect and in, in order, and there's no fear in anybody, even if their energy was bad. But as a child who is or dog <laughs> who is so susceptible to that strong energy, they're like. Danger, Will Robbins. Back up, you know, like, like it just is listen not. Listen to him. Yeah, listen to that. Listen if you to that had to be a mom all over again. Oh gosh. Like starting with what you know now. Boom, and yeah. then do it all over. Totally different. Rip, yeah. One thousand percent different. One thousand percent. I just think that we teach our kids to shut down. I mean, I know my. I don't blame my family. These are all like I don't blame myself anymore. I did have guilt about that when I first started saying, "Oh my gosh, this could be so much different." God, I raised my kids this way. It was horrible. You know what? I did. And so I, I had the tools I had, and yeah. that's all I had. You can't do anything else about but that. But when I, I didn't tell my family that I saw angels growing up, no way. That was a Bible thing. That was a Christmas thing. That is not a share at the pasta table thing. No, no one knew that I would see faces. I would, whatever, because I was very sick as a child, too, because I didn't know I had celiac disease. So, um, I, I, you know, my many hours in the lavatory... The, the loo. Um, <laughs> my, I would see yeah. angel, angels would come to me all the time. Okay, where was that when you were parenting your kids? It, it was construed. It was not as it was not as a comforting thing. I I I was I'm dense. You gotta knock me over the head apparently <laughs> with the spiritual hammer. So um, I, my spiritual oh. Awareness was limited and still fear-based, I would say. Um, angels, I saved my life, near-death experiences. I mean, like, list goes on. And still, I didn't really wake up. So when I translated it to my kids, it was not the way I should have. Why do you think you were dense? Um, well, I mean, my my father called me a sidekick when I would see things in my dreams. And he called me, hey, there's my sidekick. Is it a psychic? Like, he make fun of it and joke. And he was jovial. And I laughed. I'm like, <laughs> I'm never sharing anything again. <laughs> this is so funny. That's the last story I say. <laughs> you know? Because it was just always joked about, picked on. So I think that I had a negative connotation. Well, maybe I don't get it. You know? Maybe maybe I am should keep this to myself. So, well, I, so when I have kids, of course your angels are with you. And your angels are watching you. My kids, oh, this is fantastic. Mothering, mothering 101. My kids will say, Mom, you remember when you used to say, oh, your angels are, angels are punishing you? I said, I said that? They said, oh, God, yeah. Like if, like, I, we bumped into the wall, which one of them did all the time. Like, oh, just bumped into the wall. I'm like, ah, oh, your angels are punishing you. We laugh. Ha ha. That's a horrible thing to say. Your angels are not punishing you. I said, I got, like, I had such guilt about that. Oh, my gosh. I said that. Where is your mind? Where is your mind? Fear-based. Mm. You have a structure of what you know your relationship with God is. You have a structure of what you know what your spirituality is. And that's what you know. And that's what you're carrying around. It's like a little little bucket you carry around. Oh, I can pull out of that. Oh, that's not that's not right. That doesn't put that back in. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't fit my life. There's no bucket. It's all one. I didn't teach that to my kids until now. Sorry, kids. Mm. <laughs> Better late than never. Oh, always better late than never. So now um, we have children who might not be having a parent who tells them, quiet now, honey. You don't really see that or ignore that or make fun of it. Now, you know, 2019 is awareness. People are like, I've heard of that before. Indigo? Yeah, wait a second. That might be what that kid's talking about. Even though I don't know anything, at least it's a book I could read. Or this is a show I could watch. Or there's somebody out there who knows about this. So even if the parent isn't aware, that kid has a fighting chance. You know? Or older people like me who have older children now realize, boy, you screwed up. Let's go back. Let's go fix that. Hey, kids, gather around. I got something to tell you. Everything I said, erase it. <laughs> From this point on, this is your relationship with who you are. 
you're a spiritual being having a human experience, not the other way around. Embrace that part. And then the second part is easy. I bet it was really a wonderful aha moment for them to observe you looking back and yeah. forgiving yourself yeah. and not carrying that guilt or that pain or any of that forward onto them. Yeah. You know, it just kind of, you just broke your chain right there. I really did sit them down. Like, I really did. No yeah. more generations beneath you, my friend, that's yeah. going to be rearing children in this manner and not being able to identify be open. sensitivities. Everything that comes to you, be open to it. You see something, you have, you, you hear something, you think it's intuitive, you hear, you think it's the Holy Spirit. It is. Go with it. Really? Mom, that's not planning. That's not life. Oh, yes, that is. Go with it. But I, but I have to plan everything out. A, B, C, D. No, you don't. A, B is good enough. Let C, D. Let, <laughs> let the Holy Spirit take C and D. Go. That's the advice now. And it's fabulous abundance for them. Abundance beyond measure. Happiness, abundance, less fear. Mm. And it's a great way to be. So there's nothing is being stifled anymore. That is truly who you are. What I was experiencing was holding back. Like, you know, oh, if something's tapping me, that's brush that off. That's, that can't be real. That's not real. How was your spouse through all of this? Um, you know what? I, the universe definitely chose that because he went with me through lots of uh, near-death experience. He was with me. I mean, there was some things and he's like, could this be really happening? I'm like, I don't know. Let's just get through it. So we would get through things. And he, about seven or eight years ago as well, we switched everything, our awareness, perception completely to a joyful life where heaven is here. Instead of hell, you know, which, yes. you know, your perception is hell. I mean, this is hell. If was, you look at it that way. Was he able to recognize the sensitivities that your kids yes. had and all the experiences Yeah, and all there? of our kids have something. I mean, like all of our kids, like my oldest one is very in touch with spirit of, um, specifically with my father who's passed, but um, he leads her pennies. I have a book about that. Heaven Sent is based on her finding a penny, but it's 16 years later. She's still finding them. At times of doubt or worry or even joy, like gets a big story, she's got a big job. Well, this is the greatest thing. Boom, honey. Always. Jars and jars of them. She keeps them all? Yeah. She Aww. does keep them all. She does keep them all. She loved her grandfather very much, and he's, I think, one of her biggest supporters from the spirit. Yeah, it's a sweet book. I love how Jen calls it a children's book, but really it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. appears to look like one, but the gist of it and the story of it, you know, reconnecting, yeah. carrying on that new relationship with your beloved one who's passed away. And you can find that on your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well as her private sessions are on her website. If you like the way that Jen is rolling, I love your sassiness. Oh my and god, I I'm love, so sassy. And I love how straightforward she is. <laughs> And if you think that's someone that you resonate with and you're listening to this or watching this and you say, gosh, that's the person I need to help me motivate or find myself or do my self-healing journey, my God, please, fingers to keyboard, reach out to her. Sweet. Get on her website, dolifeinspired.com. Yep. I always like to say that because sometimes, and I get lost in it too, I'll watch something yeah. that I really resonate with, whether it's... An, an artist or a DIY or yeah, something, yeah. you know, and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> and then when it's over, I'm like, oh, oh I guess that's over. No, it doesn't have to be. Like, please, let's start supporting ourselves and yeah. following through and reaching out to the people that really resonate with you. Find your tribe, peeps. I know. The tribe is so important. <laughs> really, it is. I, I want to know if there yes. are, like, one or two stories that really stick out to you as a mom when your kids were going through all of this mm. awakening. There are dozens. We could hold her hostage for yeah. a full week and still not cover them. But just a few. Because I love the way you storytell. Yeah, I think one of my big... Uh, well, besides, you know, the one with my middle kid really kind of shook me. That always stuck with me through the years. So finally when I had my aha, uh -huh, I was like, Oh, that was that! Oh, that makes sense now. Oh, that was... Oh, so I brought those forward, reconciled, so I could see them differently here. So here I am seeing things differently in my youngest child. Um, I was scolding. Of course, you know, please, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm still going to scold my kids. I don't care how enlightened you are. Hello. <laughs> don't hit your sister. I mean, it's really just basic rules. So I'm sitting there and I said, you know, yada, yada, I want you to do this and stop doing this and fly straight. I think I might have to spank you. I might have to wallop. Mommy. 
do whatever you need to do. And it was peaceful. I'm like, but it's like, it, I understand. I won't do it again. Just to do it, what you need to do. I'm like, I need to do nothing. Go on. Go play with your sister. Just make sure not to come in my room while I'm crying. Because <laughs> I go in my room like, <laughs> oh, and does he teach me these lessons? He's such a good boy. <laughs> He's so much smarter than me. Maybe he was my father in another life. Boom. Right there. I'm like, that freaking kid owns me. He knows everything about me. And don't you know it, he knows everything about me. He's like, I got this. Mom, whatever you need to do for you. Whatever. Like, it's always, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm prospering. What do you need? Like, oh, God, I don't need anything now. Just give me a hug. Like, that was the best. That was one of the best moments that I knew. Like, my kid's connected to who he is. I'm good. He's good. <laughs> My mouth probably would have dropped open and go, are you, are I, you I, the Dalai Lama? I know. I was like, like gosh, the, so the wooden spoon, I don't take it off the wall then. <laughs> Shoot. What are they even doing there? I mean, it, like, I never really had to reprimand them. I mean, I always did. I, this must be this threat thing, this New York thing. Like, oh, you will behave and you will da-da-da-da. Well, right. That was part of the culture. Just That's 100%. what the family did. I mean, I remember my grandmother chasing my brother under a table with a wooden spoon. I mean, it's like, John. And the then out. all of a sudden for your child mm -hmm. to react in such a, an opposing Accepting. manner yeah. than what the family traditionally is doing mm -hmm. is a shocker. Mm -hmm. like, love, and love and compassion. Complete love and compassion. Oh, good. I, I did something wrong. I'll accept it. What do you need to do? I'm, I'm good. Well, I got nothing now. You took the wind right out of my sails. <laughs> Give me five minutes. I mean, like, seriously, I go in my room and I cry. Like, disciplining my kids was d very hard for me. Like, even if I would yell at them at school, I would always go to my room and cry. I hated doing it. I hated it. Hated it. And then when, now, I don't have to. I don't even have to yell at them. I mean, so I spoke with them as I'm speaking now. Like, I would just, here's these teenagers and one was a little younger and I would say, I think I can tell you exactly what this feels like. When you do this, that, the other thing, it doesn't feel right with me energetically. We don't, this is not how I want this energy of this family unit to go. I feel like this is, you're pulling the energy and you're making it, okay, I'll work on that. Wow. Okay. Well, deal. Awesome. Complete. What kind of words of advice would you give any parents or care providers or people in, you know, authority over, you know, children in a classroom per se? Yeah, classroom. About paying attention to sensitivities or intuition. I, you know, acceptance is something our, our society in a whole, even with children, is, is um, lacking. And I, I, I substituted, I taught religion, I worked at a high school, for, I mean, like I owned businesses where kids came in. Acceptance. Listening to that child and accepting what they have to say. Sometimes they have to be corralled, they can't talk for the hour while we're in class, but accepting what they have to say validates that what they say is important, that their energy that they are sharing with you is important. And sometimes kids don't have that support in other places. So if they're coming to you as a teacher, you give them that space. You allow a space for them to share. And that doesn't mean that you have to engage or answer the question. Allow. It's not allowing. It's acceptance. And you create a completely different dynamic for that child. It's a safe, secure place. You know? See, that's secure. Yeah. They, you don't have to be... Well, let me dissect that for him. I don't know what that means. That's not, your, that's not your job. Your job is to be an accepting being with this person who's coming to you. And that's divine order. It's all been planned out. So accept, if you could accept that as you're a teacher sitting in the classroom, that all the children in your classroom were divinely in order in that classroom. Even the one that you thought, oh my gosh... A child is going to try my patience by by February. I'm going to start crying. It's it's divinely in place because everybody needs to learn a lesson from that. So if you just kind of accept, you know, doesn't mean you still don't do your due diligence. Johnny, I asked you, we're not supposed to talk at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, kind of thing. But when he comes to you and says, you know, I, I, this is what happened to me last night. Allow him to have that space. Maybe he doesn't get it at home. You know? That's a really great tidbit of information. Yeah, we just... We, we, you know, we do that, you know, as, as adults, we, we, have, we practice that too at, our, at work. You know, there might be a coworker who 
kind of always shows up in your office and kind of always that if you step back for a second, they're finding their way to you, to your office for a reason, allow them that space. And then you can say after they've said their piece, Oh, I've got to get back to that project. Mary had me do. I'll, I'll check you later. But you've allowed them to have that comfort and space. That's what we, as human beings, because we're doing this, we're human beings, but we're spiritual. I think in the back of my head, and not to get off topic, because we are wrapping up, but mm. huh, when you're providing that space for someone, whether it's the person in your office or the student or the child, it can be very scary for the listener, you know, yeah. trying to figure out what their purpose is. Yeah. And I, I like how you've repeated, you know, it's not up to you to give an answer. And it's not up for you to list out directions or referrals or yeah. step-by-step process. It's to provide the safe space. That's it. And do that in your family, right? With your kids. You're providing them a safe space. When they come home, you know, at the dinner table was my favorite time. This happened at school. That happened. And I would get, Mom, can I have permission to say a curse? He was a real bank. I'm like, you know, it wasn't the four letter word most of the time. It had three letters and started with an A and ended with an S. But anyway, um, you Guess know what it is, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a safe space that they knew they could say that. And then I would let them say their piece. And then I would, cause well, now I have a job. I, I, I'm being inspired as a mom to say, what do you think they felt like when they were doing that? When they were behaving that way in the classroom? Well, he obviously wanted to get his point across. I said, you also maybe he felt like no one was listening to him. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would, that was my job to let them see things differently and be more compassionate. I'm not telling you to give that kid an answer. I'm telling you to hold a space for him. Be compassionate. Mm-hmm. You don't know the story all the time. You know, Lumineers, if you're located here in Atlanta, you can actually find Jen out and about in Atlanta doing some talks and hosting some gatherings with Raise the Vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have a talk in April. Um, I think I'll have that posted on my website, though. I'm not sure the date and time, but it's in April. DoLifeInspired.com. I want to tell you, thank you so much for being here. We could talk all day. We could. And that's what's going to happen when the cameras turn off. (laughs) Apologies. But we're not going to hold you guys here that long. But we love bringing you these tidbits of information and these rich stories from other Lumineers who are living it, doing it, and being successful at it. Yay. Yeah. And Lumineers, thank you for being here. Thank you for lending us your eyes, your ears. And we hope you are doing so well. Please like and subscribe and follow us. Lumineers, new content is coming. You're going to love what's brewing over here. Remember, it's not woo-woo. It's true truth. Bye.